Hi everyone, this is just a little update on the uh, Gobo uh, tests here and uh, right now I have this running on a 1.5 volt battery which is that battery right there a Sunbeam battery from the dollar store and uh, it's going through my meter the battery voltage is 1.66 volts and I've got it adjusted that it's drawing 3 milliamps at the 1.66 volts and um, there's my read the motor or the uh, platter of a disk drive that has the four magnets and this is the new coil that I'm using so uh, in my first video I actually uh, the Gobo test one um, it ended up that the little uh, coil that I was using, this one's a, lo a lot bigger, um, had a magnet incorporated in it. So I've since modified that coil and uh, I broke it apart and got the magnet out. But that magnet was working against, so there were two uh, fields working against each other. The magnet, uh, small magnet that was inside that core was actually uh, the same uh, polar or pole that my magnets were here so <laughs> the thing wasn't working very efficiently so as you see now the motor is running much more efficiently and uh, this here is a um, coil of a uh, shaded pole motor that I inserted two uh, ferrites from uh, one of those uh, those little AM radio antennas so I've got two of those ferrites in there and uh, if we look at our RPM we try to get this here adjusted we're about at uh, 235 is what I was uh, getting somewhere around there and um, here's the uh, scope shot shut the light off here and uh, pretty well the same kind of thing except you know we're operating at a much lower voltage and uh, again it's the same deal here I've got my flyback uh, being captured and that's going uh, right here in this uh, capacitor here 60 microfarad with the uh, very same load which is uh, 10k uh, ohm load and the uh, voltage on that load is uh, about 1.86 volts so uh, I've actually checked the math out bring it to that page there so we've got well I put in 1.85 so there's our our watts there on the bottom line that's what people are always interested in. this is what we're collecting back so 0.00 zero three four and uh, let's scan down here and that's what's going in so we got our 1.66 volts at 0 0.003 uh, amps equals 0 0.004 well pretty well five I guess so um, you know a little bit of recovery there of the energy and uh, that's it so uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to modify the uh, rotor at this time now. So again, it's pretty well the same thing if I slow down the, the rotor. Uh, hardly any uh, change in the uh, draw is occurring. It's just starting up again now. So as you see, it's still around about 3 uh, milliamps or, you know, at very most 4 milliamps. So it's starting to spin. So anyways, I'll stop it right now. So I got the four magnets this way here and I'll be using this uh, small coil again. But now what I've done is I've broken off the other section here uh, that has uh, had the magnet and the other coil. And I'll retest this coil in a configuration where a user called uh, All Canadian has uh, posted a uh, method of having a no back EMF uh, motor and I'll uh, test that out so now I'll be mounting these magnets here 
um, uh, gluing them so that the poles, well you'll see. So I'll just stop the camera now and I'll do that modification and uh, try out uh, the motor with this coil here and see how well it does. Okay, so here is uh, all Canadians um, no back EMF uh, design concept here which is utilizing that little inductor and uh, it's basically an H core so it has uh, you know a complete ferrite cap on each side here and ferrite going across that coil and that's a 78 uh, millihenry uh, inductance that coil there and I've got the magnets in the configuration that uh, All Canadian has suggested and um, again I'm utilizing my uh, 1.5 volt uh, battery there and we're at 1.62 volts and we're drawing just a little under 10 milliamps that's about as uh, lowest uh, current draw I can get it to, to draw I had a little bit of difficulty uh, with the reed switch because of this kind of magnet configuration um, let me show you here so the magnets <laughs> believe it or not I was able to uh, super glue the magnets just on the edge there of that uh, hard drive platter and um, in that configuration it was making double uh, contacts with the reed switch so what I did is I uh, glued some other uh, neomagnets here at the exact positions of these magnets. So I have my reed switch underneath the, uh, the unit here, just uh, holding up here in the air there, this piece here. So, so not to get interfered with these magnets there. Anyways, I've got it uh, working and let's start it up here uh, let's see here let the side it goes or is it the other side oh, okay spinning it backwards all right so it's taking off and if we look at the uh, scope uh, these are what the uh, that's with my scope probe across the coil there. So we are seeing a little bit of wave here and a little bit of a dip there, a clean top. But uh, I wouldn't say this is 100% uh, no back EMF. Um, I'll let it spin up again and um, We'll pull the plug on it and have a look and see if it's creating any kind of... Uh, that's... Uh, I'm also picking up the flyback and that's what's on the 10k uh, resistor there. Uh, 2.84 volts at about the best there. And uh, our RPM... Let me see here if I can get this thing to work. We're at uh, 272 right now, and uh, I think it's about uh, at 280 RPM uh, at its tops. So there we are again. So right now I'm just going to pull the plug on it, and let's have a look and see uh, what we have. So there is some kind of... Uh, uh, back EMF there that's what those bumps are there I just shut the light off so that's with the platter just spinning and turning down so uh, anyways very good uh, interesting uh, motor concept and uh, thanks uh, AC for sharing that with us and uh, I don't know if any uh, anyone else has replicated this but it is definitely an interesting uh, motor concept and uh, that's about it for today. Thanks for watching.